Hey guys, it's Justine and I have my November wrap up. I've read quite a few books this year so I'll try to make it quick and basically just give you the gist of the books. So the first book that I read I got in my October Owl Crate and it was A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. Um, I think I really liked this book. It was like an insane asylum. This girl was sent to live there for reasons that I kind of like guessed. It's like the how and the why kind of. Um, but I liked it. Um, I'm excited to read her Not A Drop To Drink series because I haven't got there yet, but I'm super excited. And honestly, I kind of wanted like, I hope this isn't a standalone. I want like more. And I think I gave it like four out of five stars. I liked it. Um, and then I read Vengeance Road by Aaron Bowman. And I also got this in uppercase October. And this one's like a young adult Western. And I really like this one as well. I think I gave it like four, 4.5 out of five. And it was like, they're looking for gold in the old west, kind of. And then there's like, it's kind of like, the author gain, like drew inspiration from a show that's coming or something. So there's this gold rush show that I want to watch, but I think I probably missed it, but it was really good. Check it out if that sounds interesting to you. Then I read some single issue books. I read Plutona. This is by Jeff Lemire, Emmy Lennox, and Jordi Belair. And I just like the art. I thought that this chick, like if you guys watched Recess when you were children, this chick, like our main character, totally looks like Spinelli and I love it. And it's basically like, this chick was kind of a dick. I didn't really like her as a main character because I felt like she was like a mean friend, but there's like these four kids and then this chick's brother goes missing and then they find a dead body. And I'll probably read the series just to see, but the chick was kind of not very nice. Um, and I got that in Landfall Freight. Same with this one. This is called The Spire by Simon Spurry, Jeff Stokely, and Andre May. And what was this one about? This one was kind of weird. I didn't really like the art because I like clean art and this was kind of like, um, like rough around the edges, if that makes sense. And it was like, I like that there was LGBT involved. Um... But I don't know. I don't know if I would continue on with it. Like, I can't even really remember what it's about to tell you guys. So obviously that means that it wasn't that, you know, great. Then I read From Under the Mountains by Gibson Leong and Churchland, again from Landfall Freight. And this one kind of reminded me of, like, Mulan. Because it was, like, this chick. They're, like... I don't think they're Asian, but they're, like... I don't know. A different culture. They're not white people. So, and she was, like, going to join this army, and it's, like, a sister and a brother, and I don't know. Same thing with the art, though. It's kind of, like, it's almost, like, in sepia colors, and then, but there was, like, different stories going on at the same time, so it was a little bit confusing. I probably wouldn't continue on with that either. Ah, oh, then, also from Landfall Freight, I think the rest, uh, most of these are, um, Zombies, Zombies Can't Swim, Story and Art by Kim Herbst. I thought this one had so much potential, didn't really live up to the potential. These two people, like, so from the get-go, I just assumed that they'd be, like, boyfriend and girlfriend, but then, like, when I read the book, they acted, like, if you look at this, even this very first page, then I'm like, oh, maybe it's, like, her dad, like, it's, like, a dad and a daughter. I don't know. And then it doesn't really, like, define their relationship. So I just found it, like, really weird that way. I did like how it's in, like, black and white. But it's kind of weird because it's basically like saying, what if the zombie apocalypse happened? Here's what we would do. Like, it's like their zombie plan played out in a book, but it's not actually the zombie apocalypse, if that makes sense. So that was kind of weird. Uh, and then I read Heart in a Box by T Kelly Thompson and Meredith McLaren. This one I did like. I like, look at this art. It's gorgeous. Um, that art. This, the inside is kind of weird as well like again it's not as detailed as I like like it's kind of weird but it's like this girl who I think it's like Satan I guess and she like wishes her heart to be gone because her heart gets broken and then she wants her heart back and she has to like go all over and try to find like the pieces of her heart but if the people who have her pieces of heart don't want to give it up if she like steals it back it like kills them so it's a cool storyline like I like it um I think again I wanted more because it just kind of like ends but then it doesn't like give you closure. So I would read more of it. 
Um, and then I read Honor Girl by Maggie Thrash. This is a graphic memoir. And this is a girl who goes to camp and it's an LGBT and she is a lesbian and she falls in love with like her camp, like a counselor, is that what, yeah, counselor. And um, then it's like, or they both fall in love with each other and then it's kind of like what happens after that and her coming of age and it's a memoir so it's really neat. Um, but again, the artwork, I don't like this artwork, it's like a child drew it. But the story is good. And again, I kind of want to see like where she is now. Like I would like more just because I'm snoopy and I want to know like what happened. Uh, and then I read Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. Sorry, the black, the matte black is super dirty from apparently my greasy, nasty hands, but you know. Um, this one was really cute. It's about like a plus size girl who joins like a beauty pageant kind of like in spite of her mom, but then it like gets better like and she has like a crew of misfits that she's kind of a jerk and is like ah blah 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 but then they become friends kind of thing so like it's a nice like nice it's a cute read that one I got in owl crate and then this one's another uppercase uh first and then by Emma Mills this was the October one which I thought was like super weird because I was expecting like a scary horror book and it's like hi it's a love story um Basically, I don't remember anything about this book. Oh, she's like in love with this guy and then her cousin comes and he's kind of like a nerd. And then she's like, oh, he's gonna ruin my high school life, blah, blah, blah. And then I can't remember anything else. So, I mean, I think I liked it when I read it, but I can't remember now. It's not leaving a lasting impression in my mind. Um, and then I read The Ruining by Anna Colomore because I wanted a contemporary and... This one, oh yeah. So she like leaves her family to go be a nanny and then not everything is what it seems and the family's like messed up and they like start blaming stuff on her that didn't actually happen and it's crazy. And look, I can do a book face. But yeah, so I don't know, it's messed up. So if you like messed up books, read that one. Uh, then I read Catch Up Clouds by Annabelle Pitcher and this one I thought sounded so cool I just grabbed it off book outlet because it was like 99 cents or something and this chick like writes Letters to an inmate at a prison. He's on death row. He's gonna be killed and she tells him her secret about how she killed somebody But it's like not actually like What it seems so I was kind of like disappointed in it because I feel like they like Lied to you to get you to read it and then that's not really what it was about um, And it's told in like letter form but it's like letters, but then it like goes back and forth between like past and present. So it was super annoying. I didn't really like that. Uh, then I read The Sin Eater's Daughter by Melinda Salisbury. Sorry, I have to move. Ah, move you guys. Okay, my legs are falling asleep. This cover is so gorgeous and the book disappointed me. It's basically like this girl is um, f fed poison because she can tolerate it and then she like touches people and her touch kills them so shatter me but then really it's like a big conspiracy and everything kind of like falls on top of itself um throughout the book and I really disliked it I thought it was so boring like nothing happens and it's boring and I wouldn't recommend it then I was so excited I forgot I didn't read this yet and then when I read it I was like oh I'm so sad that it's over and it's um Alex and Ada by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn volume three um, Ada is like a cyborg and she's given to Alex as like a birthday present or like some kind of present from his grandma and then they like change her so she can think for herself but that's like illegal and then just pretend and like all this stuff happens and then this is the final volume and I'm so sad and I hope there's like a spin-off and I hope there's more and when I met Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn at Comic-Con they kind of were like mentioning possibly like um, a movie or like a TV show which would be super awesome so hopefully that happens because it's an amazing series and if you haven't read it you should. Uh, then I read Black Science um, Volume 1 How to Fall Forever by Rick Remender, Matteo Scalera, and Dean White. This is like messed up. I don't like it. There was too many characters and too many things happening and too many characters that looked the same and I couldn't tell like if someone died who it was out of the characters because they all kind of looked the same and who they were married to and who their kids were and who their dad's uncle's brothers was and their boss and I don't know I I would not continue on with this series it was just too much happening for my brain uh, then I won this book from Goodreads so I thought I would pick it up 
Uh, it's Danny Dingle's Fantastic Finds, the Metal Mobile. So it's like this boy and he likes to do science and his mom's like, bah, you can't do science. But his dad's like a failed scientist. So he's like, yeah, let's do science. And then there's this other kid who like is like their nemesis because his dad, their dads used to work together and then his dad got fired and the other dad like stole his idea or something. So they're like arch nemesis and they're trying to like out do each other in their science projects. So it's kind of cute. And then like he has like this other friend who their relationship's kind of like Bart and Milhouse because his other friend, he's just like, oh, you're weird, but I'm your friend. Like, I don't know, but look at how cool the book is because it's got like blue pages. So that was fun. So it's like definitely for like a boy reader, like a young boy child so yeah not so not very much girly things happen in it um and then just for fun because I was like I want to read something fun I picked up Ever After High a school story next top villain by Susan Selflor so apparently this is like the spin-off of Ever After High that's written by Shannon Hale I don't know I just read it I thought it looked cute I like how it has all like the cute little filigrees or whatever around the pages and this one is basically like this, well, I guess she's like the swan princess. That's what I'm gonna call her because everyone's like somebody's kid and she gets put into like a villain class and she's like, I'm not a villain. Why do I have to be a villain? But she has villain tendencies. So she's like with the Queen of Hearts' daughter and like um, Robin Hood's son and like stuff like that. And they have to be like, who can be like the most villainous? And when they're nice to each other, they get like bad marks in school. Like it's kind of weird, but I enjoyed it. Like I probably, well, I think I have another one. So I'll read more in the series obviously. Um, then this one was from Lit Cube. I decided to pick it up because I was trying to get through all my subscription box books. Um, it is Cage of Deceit by Jennifer Ann Davis. This is book one and it's like a fantasy. Um... <clears throat> was it this one? Yeah so this one kind of reminded me of like Aladdin because it's like this princess chick and she like sneaks out of the castle and goes and like fights bad people and then like goes back and pretends to be like a princess in the day and then she's like best friends with this boy but then she has to get like married off to be to save like the um frick what's it called their kingdom and then there's all these other kingdoms and the kingdoms are like fighting each other except for this one kingdom and then the prince from that kingdom comes and his squire's there and he's like such a dick to her and then I like had this feeling this whole time that the squire is like the prince and the prince is the squire which it hasn't like said that yet but there's something big that he has to tell her and I'm pretty sure that that's what's happening here and yeah so it was really good but if that sounds interesting check it out um it was a pretty quick read I really liked it and I'm not much of like a fantasy reader so it was a good fantasy read because I read it <laughs> uh then I picked up The Runaways this is a complete collection volume one by Brian K. Vaughan Adrian Aldona and Dakshi Mayaswa. Um, this one is like these kids parents are these like, I don't know if they're like superheroes or if they're like villains. They're in a secret, oh they're villains, a secret criminal society called the Pride and then their kids like happen to see them do something bad and they're like our parents are evil villains we have to call the police and they call the police and the police are like in with their parents and then they like do all these things to try to like kill their kids and there's like aliens and I don't know it was uh, if you're into that that's fine but I personally probably I feel like that's all of them if it's not I won't be continuing uh, then I just wanted like a contemporary so I grabbed the thing about the truth by Lauren Barnholt um, she apparently has written all these books I can't remember Oh, it's about this girl and she like gets kicked out of school and goes to this other school and this guy got kicked out of his school and he's there and then they fall in love but then she actually like lied to him about being a virgin and he finds out and then he like hates her face because he's like you lied to me blah 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 but he like lied to her about stuff too so I don't know it was kind of weird then lastly I read the world beyond sight of well okay that's a lie hold on skip back one rewind I tried to read, um, I was given a rev well, a uh, ebook review copy of, um, Missy the Werecat by P.G. Allison and I tried to read it and I couldn't do it. I just DNF'd it. I literally read the prologue and the first chapter and I couldn't do it because it was like 
it's like the whole book sounded like the prologue. Like it was like, Missy is with her parents and then she's gonna go through puberty, but she hasn't got her period yet. And she's wondering why her boobs are sore. But then all of a sudden she goes somewhere and she turns into this wild animal and she's stalking through the woods and she doesn't know what's happening. And then she takes off for two years. And now it's two years later. And like, it was like, I was telling you the story. It was like the weirdest thing ever. I couldn't do it. I did not like the writing. I like, it sounded intriguing at first, but I just couldn't do it. So if that's something that you are into, I would recommend you check it out. But for me, it wasn't my kind of book. So then I was sent this one for review review as well. It's The World Beyond Sight Upon Arrival by Joshua Delaney. And I thought this sounded really cool. It's a fantasy one, even though I'm not really that big into fantasy. Um, but it's like, I thought it was an adult book, but it's actually like a young adult book, but it's almost like written for middle grade because yeah, the first few chapters were like awesome. Like I was like, oh my God, this book drew me in. I love it so much. And then after that, it like kind of went downhill. It was like, 10 or 15 chapters leading up to this big fight that I'm like, I don't understand why they're having this fight. Why is there so many chapters about it? I don't care. Like, whatever, whatever. Then they have this fight and then everybody's fine. And then I'm just like, this was terrible. Like, why? I think I only gave it like three out of five stars because it was so boring. This whole middle part of the book leading up to this stupid fight that wasn't even that great. And it was basically like, oh, we're two guys. We have to fight to see who's a better man. Ugh. Like, who cares? Not, I don't care. So, I don't know. If you care about that, please read it. And then I felt deceived because there's like a dragon on here. But I don't remember there being any dragons. And there was like different, like, cultures. But they were like different beings. So there was like cat people. Or that's all I could see them as. He like described them. They had like fur. But all I can see is like cats like that are like people because they have long tails and fur and but then he's a human but he's the only human and he got like stolen out of human realm to go to this realm and I don't know I don't know it was crazy couldn't I read it all but I just no and then lastly I haven't finished it yet I had plans of finishing it today but I don't think that's gonna happen but I did start Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell because I wanted a contemporary because I didn't really read, well, I did, that's a lie. I read lots of contemporaries, but I love contemporary and I just have this feeling and I wanted one and I wanted to read Fangirl, but I couldn't find it because it's all buried in all of my books. So I grabbed Eleanor and Park and this is like the special edition that has like fan art in it. So that's fun. Except that in the book, all it talks about is how weird Eleanor is and that she's overweight and then in these pictures she's skinny. So I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but it's like in the 80s. So people have like mixtapes and shit. So that's funny. And so far I'm enjoying it. Nothing's really happening. Um, it's just a guy and a girl falling in love or whatever happens. So yeah, um, let me know if you guys have read any of these books, if you recommend any, if I should continue some series or read other books or just like, screw it. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. 